so now we have the two last speakers of this morning are uh, two colleagues from the Erasmus University in uh, Rotterdam. And I think we start with Peter de Bruyne. Okay, we have a first question from live streaming, but we will keep it for the end. Yep, okay, thank you. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, and good morning, everybody. Um, so, as you can see here, again, we're going to challenge uh, history, and that's a kind of a bit coincidental that I came up with the exact same title uh, because I'm not in any way related to the Challenging History program. Um, as I went, was introduced, I'm a PhD student at Erasmus University and um, we're there doing research on heritage education and challenging history as it was introduced, sensitive, complex histories um, are a very important theme in our research there. Um, so today I would like to um, tell you something about my research um, and I will do that by presenting some of my results relating to uh, a case again on transatlantic slavery which again is coincidental. Um, uh, but before I come to that I would like first uh, for you to have a look at this diorama. Um, this is a museal object, and it's on display at the Tropen Museum in Amsterdam, the Museum of the Tropics. And it represents, as you maybe can see, a sugar plantation in uh, Suriname uh, during the 19th century. It was created by a Suriname artist, Gerrit Schouten. Um, and as you can see, there are some slaves working in the fields. You can see... Um, a nice house, a nice white house, some palm trees, um, a nice blue sky, just a few clouds, so you would think that, you know, life on such a plantation was quite nice. Well, obviously it wasn't. Um, so what this object does, it presents a singular perspective. It very much present, presents the perspective of its maker, of Gerrit Schouten, who created this diorama. In, uh, during the 19th century. Now my presentation is about plurality of perspectives and how can you deal with plurality of perspectives in museum education when you have objects like this at your disposal. Um, well, as I said, this pre presentation is based on research. Um, this is PhD research project um, and I'm um, analyzing educational resources of heritage institutions, uh, which are uh, made for school students, so that's um, the, my area of study. And I'm doing a comparative analysis between the Netherlands and England. So I would like to present a Dutch and an English example today. Let's start off with a little bit of theory. What do I understand by the concept of plurality of perspectives? It ac it's actually a quite complex concept with multiple layers, but when you would ask me to describe it in one sentence, I would say something like this. It's about studying events, or in this case, historical events, from multiple points of view. So not from one view, but from multiple points of view. Now, say that you're creating an educational program on transatlantic slavery. How do you construct plurality of perspectives from that? There are several uh, ways to do that, but I will focus on one, and that's this one. You can construct these multiple perspectives within the narrative you are creating. So, you already talked about uh, the perspective of victims and bystanders. In the case of transatlantic slavery, um, you can include the perspectives of several different historical actors. So you could focus on the trader perspectives and look through their eyes how they experienced this history and ignore the slaves and don't look through their eyes. When you're dealing with the abolition of the slave trade, you can only focus on 
the abolitionists, so those people who had campaigned um, to abolish the slave trade and ignore those that supported the system and actually defended it. And secondly, you could very much focus your educational program on the national level. You know, how did your country, what kind of role did they play in this history? We could even zoom in on the local level. You know, in the city, what kind of role did the city play uh, in this history? But you can also take it much broader and take a global perspective. And that's what I argue would be important in museum education when dealing with sensitive histories, to not focus on one of these perspectives, but to include multiple. Now, why is that important? Um, I actually prepared three arguments, but for the sake of time, I will uh, skip the last one. The first one is that a singular perspective can lead to exclusion. And that's, again, especially relevant when we're dealing with these kind of sensitive histories. And also in the globalizing world that we live in today, um, societies have become increasingly culturally diverse. Um, that's also a development that's reflected in uh, school classrooms. Um, so you have students with very different cultural backgrounds and very different, and they might have very different points of view uh, on these kind of sensitive histories. So in order to connect to these diverse students, you would need a plurality of perspectives. The second one relates to the first one, but is more um, an idea or uh, it stems more from theories of history didactics. Um, because many didactical experts in the field of history education have stressed the idea that um, history education could be a good vehicle to teach students how to critically assess information. Because they work with evidence with very different sources. Now, I think that museum education may be even a better vehicle to teach these kinds of skills because museums have very much physical, concrete evidence uh, in their collections which students could use to um, you know, debate about and, and assess the perspective that's inherent in these sources. Now, of course, when you would want to construct these multiple perspectives in your educational programs, you would um, encounter certain challenges. And these will come up during uh, two examples of my research, research I will now present. Um, but I first would like to tell you a little bit more about my method. What did I do when analyzing these educational resources? Well, I've analyzed resources on slavery by heritage institutions, Netherlands and England, in the age category of 13 to 15 years old. For this case, I analyzed six English and four Dutch resources or programs, including everything, so exhibitions, students' assignments, all activities, teachers' guide, if they were available. And relating to plurality, I basically asked two questions. Which historical events were covered in these programs? So relating to transatlantic slavery, you could think of um, the Middle Passage, which is the um, transportation of slaves across the Atlantic to the Caribbean. Life on plantations, was the abolition included? All things like that. And second, through whose perspective did students um, experience these, uh, or through whose perspective did they learn about these events? So again, slaves were traders, abolitionists versus pro-slavery campaigners. So I took two examples. Let's first take a look at the English example, which is a National Maritime Museum in London. And they have a quite elaborate program on transatlantic slavery, which is called Transatlantic Slavery Study Day. And it consists of three separate sessions. And I will take them one by one, but I will skip the manuscript session again uh, because of the time. 
First up, the gallery session. So here, students go into the gallery um, and learn about this history there. So I analyzed this entire exhibition, uh, all objects, text cards, text panels, etc., and I found out that it was actually quite balanced in representing different historical events relating to slavery. So Africa before the slave trade was included, um, the Middle Passage was included, life on plantations was there, the abolition was included. But I also found out that these events were very much narrated through a European perspective. So the focus was in Europe and particularly on Britain. Um, and that was also apparent in the way um, the gallery did mention slaves because they were very much um, mentioned in passive voice. So you get quotes like this, which is from an object text card relating to the Middle Passage, which st states that these shackles were used by Europeans to restrain captives while on board ship. When you would um, um, turn this quote into a perspective of a slave, you would get something like when a slave went on board the ship, they encountered a sailor who took them by their wrists and shackled them, which is a very different point of view. Now, so you have this exhibition. How do you deal with that as an educator who wants to construct multiple perspectives? The National Maritime Museum actually does have a clever way to get around that because they encourage students to construct their own narrative. They are all equipped with these kinds of mobile devices and they can use it to you know, walk around the gallery, collect evidence there, make recordings, uh, take notes, take pictures, and they collect evidence to eventually create their own story on transatlantic slavery. And they're also equipped with several question cards which encourage them to take a different perspective than that's inherent in the gallery. So you get questions like this. What were conditions like for enslaved Africans on the Middle Passage, which is a different perspective than that object text card I just showed you. The second session is the object handling session. And here students get to work with um, several different kinds of replica objects. And they handle them and um, get to know them and uh, you know, just work with them. Here I found out that objects from multiple historical actors were present. So when you think of objects relating to slavery, you normally think of things like whips, chains, manacles, all these kind of nasty things. But the National Maritime Museum included also other things, such as these sugar nippers, which were used by Britons at home to cut sugar with, or this African drum, which represents African culture before it was encountered by Europeans. And again, they show in this session how to unlock multiple perspectives through assignments. This is an example of um, that. So they ask, what do these objects tell us about the horrific conditions for people on board slavers? So people on board slavers is a very broad category. It doesn't only refer to the experience of slaves, but also to that of sailors, you know, who also had, could have a very rough time on board these uh, vessels to uh, uh, the Americas and the Caribbean. So as I said, I will skip the manuscript session, um, but I think we've already seen some challenges and potential solutions of how to deal with plurality of perspectives in museum education. So you could use replica objects if you have objects that are, represent a certain perspective. You could let students construct their own narrative. And you could create assignments that trigger other perspectives. For the Dutch example, we return to the Tropenmuseum. And we return to the diorama I showed you in the beginning. 
So as I said, this very much represents a singular perspective, that of Gerrit Schouten, who created this romantic and idyllic view of plantation life during the 19th century. In the, some of their brochures, the Tropenmuseum states things like this. The raw reality for the slaves is not present in Schouten's work. And they actually draw attention to some of the slave, hut, slave huts that are visible in the diorama, but that are hidden behind this gigantic mansion of the planter. So this way, they actually put the perspective of this object into perspective in order to construct multiple perspectives. So to conclude, I have argued that you would want to challenge history and museum education in today's globalizing world. It's important to construct a plurality of perspectives in order to avoid exclusion and allow for reasoning. There certainly are challenges to constructing this when you're working in museum education, but I've shown that these can be overcome by creating inventive tasks that use a singular perspective to evoke plurality, or by allowing students to construct their own narrative and take their own perspectives. I think that in this manner, museum education offers great potential for teaching students plurality of perspectives, as they can provide them with uh, the actual physical evidence from the past in the form of objects. This way, challenging history, I think, in museum education can even become an opportunity. Thank you for your attention.